people thought that that was necessary in order to sell her, which maybe they were right. Or like, and what that's like saying about becoming, like, basically like alleged, alleged, alleged. I know. It's interesting. I wasn't a fan of her poetry. I really, I think I kind of believe what the public believed, that she was like a spinster recluse who didn't leave her bedroom. She was had a broken heart, and she was just in her room writing poems. So I was like, eh. I became really interested when I started working with Madeline, really finding out the, the, the story she wanted to tell, which is the truth of really who she was as a person, and that she was not the spinster recluse. She was a lively woman who desperately wanted to get published and was actively trying to meet with Higginson and be a published writer, but she was shut down many times. And, during her life, I think she only published 11 poems. Her poems were not published till after her death. But there were these rumors that she would wanted at her death all her poems to be burned. That's all nonsense. And there were erasures in her work when really many of the poems were dedicated to her brother's wife, who she had a long romantic relationship with. But Mabel, who was kind of the publicist who got all the poems in the end after Emily died, um, wanted to make Emily more digestible to the public, so she erased stuff and kind of kept the spinster, heartbroken virgin spinster story to make her more digestible to the public. So I just think it's a really important movie, especially in this Me Too time and, and equality and um, women, you know, the story here that was told was that, oh, if you're just quiet and demure and don't push too much, maybe eventually your writing will be published. But that's just not the story. That's not the accurate story. And this narrative of women, broken heart, devastated alone, still exists to this day. And that was going on in the you know, mid 19th century. That's saying, we need to move on from that. And I think the truth of this, of Emily Dickinson's true, lively life coming out is just a very important, important movie. And then Madeline also makes this funny. She takes the period biopic and kind of, you know, adds humor to uh, make it fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any advice for aspiring comedic actresses? Oh, do I have advice for aspiring comedic actresses? Well, I think it's great when you can write, because comedians can write. And so I think it's really good to focus on whatever you can write, like whether it's doing stand-up or doing um, improv. I don't personally, I never did stand-up, but I just did um, improv, I would get together with um, comedians and make up shows in my... Like I didn't do Groundlings, no, I never did do that. I just did my own show and I would rent theaters and that's kind of how I got started. So you don't, you, you could just do it on your own too. It's definitely hard, but I would say really work on your craft and write, you can write your way into the business. It's hard, it's harder, it's easier just to get cast in something. But I felt like for me, the fact that it was hard ultimately made it better because I was forced to develop material that I may not have developed had I just caught a break at a young age. Yeah. Thank you so much.